So all right, Great. tell us about yourself. Yeah, so basically I've been in sales for almost 20 years now. It's a big passion of mine. And the last couple of years I've been working with actually helping other sales teams to perform better. So structure, strategy, uh, down to the nitty gritty, because that's basically what I really love, like the nitty gritty, all the details where you can really fine tune uh, what sort of sales you go through. And I started with business to consumer, moved over to business to business and lost well, eight, nine years has been within sales, uh, sales uh, alignment program, different sort of software to sort of help sales perform better. So prospecting tools, uh, CRM, uh, marketing automation tools, stuff like that. So I'm a system nerd and a sales nerd. So I'm, I feel, I'm feeling good about that. Love it. All right, Nick. Yeah. How you doing, guys? Uh, so two things. One, I used to work in radio and TV, and then I spent 20 years in the cruise industry as a live pitch presenter. So... Two things about me that I do today is one is I do sales content and then I do uh, sales presentations for companies. So love it. Will. Scrolling over to the mute button there. Um, I'm Will. I'm co-founder at a company called Lavender. We help people write better emails faster. So um, we pivoted into this space um, about halfway through this year and, you know, been putting out a bunch of content on just how to write more effectively in your inbox and um, yeah, looking forward to hearing what you have to say today. Awesome. Tucker, good to see you, my friend. Yo, yo, good to see you and PD and Alex. It's, uh, it's been a while. What's up, guys? Um, so I'm Tucker. I'm here in Indianapolis, Indiana. I've uh, been in software sales about five years uh, at a new company for me. Been a couple months. A company called Formstack. We do forms, docs, and signatures through a platform. Um, and I'm just excited to be back here. It's been a while since I've seen some of these guys. So awesome happy to be here. Patrick, put those beautiful sunglasses back on. I'll dance for you, Frank. Don't hide um, those baby brown eyes. Uh, <laughs> they'll be back, Tucker. Don't worry, man. Uh, first of all, Nick, you, you have the best voice. It's like velvet, and it, it made me kind of shiver a bit. I'm sorry if that's too forward, but I, I liked it quite a bit. Uh, but anyway, going back to my intro, Patrick Downs, sales trainer at PandaDoc, uh, podcast host, mental health advocate, and uh, I'm excited to help out my boy Alex today. All right, Alex, the floor is yours. We're great to great to see you, man. Um, you gave us a great background, so take it away. All right, so I guess, um, you know, the best way to do this, I do want to do like a just kind of a role play with Patrick, I guess, and then, you know, you, you know, do it for maybe like the first 30 minutes, and then you guys can give me feedback after. Is that cool? Yeah, let's do it. Um, all right, so I think we talked about it, like you'll, um, you know, just kind of flow with me. I think you'll take, you'll take like sales enablement or something as a, as a training audience. So, all and, right. and, and maybe yeah. Alex, just before you jump in, you gave us some really good background, but would you say there's like two or three areas you really want us to focus on giving you feedback after the role play? Yeah. Um, well, maybe it would be helpful to know a bit, a bit about me. So I'm just like I, I said in the notes, like I'm just starting out. I'm a month into Docebo learning management software company. So you know, I haven't even taken my first call with a client yet um, at this company. So I would like to know, like, you know, kind of, um, yeah, like, just in terms of like questioning, like, am I going deep enough? Like, is there is there ways that, you know, maybe I can just like, just reframe some of the things I'm saying, also flow, just um, objective, you know, everything. I just, I need it all guys. Like, so like this, I'm, I'm trying to like be good enough so that I feel more conf confident talking about it. And yeah. like, I'm still not, you know, where I need to be, but like I, I, this, this stuff helps, you know, so. Awesome. Patrick, with that microphone, you're going to be the best victim. Yeah. And I know that we keep doing this, Frank, but like we actually were in a evaluation of Docebo at one point. <laughs> So it's another real life scenario. That's, this has happened like 10 times. Apparently my whole life is just evaluating software. So, okay. Awesome. This will be realistic. Cool. Wish and, I could send. And, yeah. and what, what role is, is, uh, you said enablement is what Patrick will be in maybe. Yeah. I mean, you know, it the, the best, so I'll just yeah. be me. Okay. Yeah. You can just be you. Okay. All right, cool. Well, um, Patrick, thanks so much for giving me some time here today, man. Really uh, looking forward to our call here today. Um, thanks a lot for, for jumping on the call. Oh, you know, anything for you. All right, man. You had some awesome sunglasses earlier, by the way. Um, you, <laughs> and I like your voice. 
Um, but, you know, let's get to the business side of things. My goal really is to unpack this project and really go deeper on some of the items that you discussed with our uh, BDR, Savannah, I think, on the first call. And, um, you know, we'll decide if, if we're a fit, if Docheba is a fit for your business and if it makes sense to get to a second call. All right. So um, typically these calls go one of three ways. Um, first is maybe we discuss things today and you notice a red flag. And that's fine. I want you to feel comfortable talking to me and, and bringing it up to me and we'll discuss it. And if so, we can, you know, part ways as friends and no harm, no foul. Second uh, is, is um, you know, maybe I notice a red flag and if so, I'll call it out and, um, you know, we'll talk about it. If it's not something our business really can do, then I'll tell you and uh, maybe even offer you a, be a, a better place to send your business. But three typically is what where most of these calls head is that you are intrigued enough to, to want to find out something more and then we pr proceed to a demo. Does that sound like a good framework for the uh, call today? Yeah, that sounds great. Nice upfront contract, man. Thank you. <laughs> oh, you're in sales enablement. So you, you got me out on that, uh, Sandler Selling. So yeah. just let's let's just break it down, man. Let's, uh, Pat, what, why, are you, why are we here today? What are you looking to get out of the call here today? Alex, I'm sure you hear this a lot, but I'm in the nightmare that is Google Classrooms, and I am one person. That I'm the entire sales enablement department, uh, which means that I have to be responsible for every team. Uh, we have four offices with the SDRs, AEs. There's four cohorts in the AEs. Uh, we have account managers and CSMs that I'm also responsible for. So I'm developing, uh, onboarding, and ongoing training for these people and I just have random crap everywhere. Some of it's in my Google Drive, some of it is in my Google Classroom, some of it is in a spreadsheet somewhere, and I just throw it at people and schedule meetings with them on the calendar and hope for the best. Um, I don't really have a plan, and it kind of feels like I'm catching um, stuff on plates as it drops from the sky all the time. So I was suggested to look at an LMS by one of my bosses, and Dojeva was one of the ones that came up, so I was hoping to learn about it today. Cool. So thanks a lot for that. Um, you know, I don't envy you being in that situation trying to catch all those plates. Um, um, well, let's talk about it. Can you, you know, tell me what happens like when you're sending out all of those um, just can you just sending training to people and, you know, hoping that they take it. What does that really look like? Do you have a way to, 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 to tell if they've taken the training? Uh, no, I mean, what I do is like, uh, I have a document that we actually have in Pandadoc that has all the different resources linked, videos embedded into it, different text. And then at the end of the day, I do like a recap with them for where I sit with them for about an hour. And then I have a slide deck that I've built as recap based on that. And we'll do drills and role plays and quizzes um, together. And I guess the way I know they haven't taken is if they don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's just kind of anecdotal, right? Like you, you, um, you know, you're just kind of hoping, right? Like that they're that it's coming in, and and you know, and and just having those discussions, which is good. Like you're doing the right thing right now. Um, so, um, like, what is the this issue with training? Is this just like something with like your team? So, you know, tell me a little bit about your team. What is your how many reps do you have under you? Like, what is like uh, your, your um, you know, size of uh, account? Just kind of get, can you give me a picture of your team itself and, and, you know, how they take training? I have about 150 reps that I train um, across the different cohorts. Um, our average deal size depends because we have uh, transactional, commercial, mid-market enterprise teams in there as well. So it's anywhere from, you know, like a 3K deal to a 200K deal. It is about what we're playing with right now. Um, the training obviously is going to be very different from like an SDR to an AE, but we're kind of delivering it the same way across the board. Um, yeah, that's just like from a high level what's going on. Cool. Do you, um, like, are there things you're noticing with uh, this, the sales training team this year? Like what's um, really prompting you to, to feel like maybe training might be somewhat of an issue to address? Is there like an event that's happened or is there anything that's um, causing you to, to think that maybe you need to look into this? Um, I mean, it's, because it's been just me, uh, it's been pretty obvious it's been a gap because I mean, 150 people under one person isn't great. And we are now investing in multiple other enablement resources. So I'm hiring four trainers and a senior manager 
And I think when bringing in someone that's more senior, they're used to using an LMS. So we're going to need that in place by the time we do that. Yeah. Um, how's your team doing like towards your goals? Like, are you, uh, have you, uh, you know, achieved your goals? What does, what does that look like just in terms of like deal, like attainment, win rates and, um, and that sort of thing? Is it where you want it to be? Yeah, it's, it's a little rocky. It's up and down. Like some months you were at 140% of our goal. And some months we're kind of just underneath um, the, the conversion rates across the board are kind of an issue. We're having issues with reporting actually. So even knowing like what the problems are has been hard. Um, so like lack of data is, is another major problem we've, we've looked at in the org, but from like a quota attainment level, it's been good. Okay. Um, when you say lack of data, what types of data do you, um, measure by what would you like to, what's important for you to measure on? Uh, probably like just like accurate funnel conversion metrics, like better data reporting in general for our top of funnel, especially has been a problem. Um, and then like bottom of funnel activities, uh, we're a little bit better because we use Salesforce and you know it's, it's more objective, but even then it, it's not the greatest. Okay. Um, but right now Salesforce is the system of record, right? With, with everything. Yep. With yeah. We'll sometimes export it like into spreadsheets and stuff, but yeah. Okay. Tell me a little bit about like what you would like to see with uh, this, this LMS software uh, do for you. Like, what are you, I know you, you, you mentioned to the BDR that you were, you know, looking at, you know, obviously you have Google, Google classrooms, you're just kind of sending stuff out to people and not, not really reporting on anything. Um, what, what do you think it needs to look at like um, right now before, you know, kind of looking into anything with us? Um, I'd prefer to just have like some sort of track I could put someone on and just like kind of push them and have it automated uh, because right now everything is like I have an Evernote with a task list so I have to remember to send this out to John this morning and Sarah the next day and and this and that and then schedule the meetings and everything I'd love a way to just automate that whole process so I can just drop somebody at the top of the process and have them fall down like a marble. Wouldn't it be easy if all of our jobs were as easy as, as just dropping down a marble, right? Yes, um, I like my brain. <laughs> well, um, you know, how do you do? You ever look back and think like how how much time you're spending on all that stuff? Like you're sending out just like an Evernote. You're constantly doing a lot of manual tasks. It looks like like how much of your week is spent doing that? Something like that. Yeah, when we do have new employees, it's probably ten hours a week uh, focused on the training. Um, well, talking about, um, you know, just kind of this, this is your world, right? Sales enablement. Do any of these problems affect other areas of the business? Like when, you know, you're kind of chasing people around for training, I know you, you know, kind of hinted at like the business is, 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 you know, kind of is, is growing and you're looking at, you know, other revenue streams, like is any of what we're talking about today affect other areas or, or, or do you know? Uh, I mean, just like from a high level, the biggest issue is the lack of resources, which we're solving. Um, but besides that, I no, it's really just the lack of specialization because you have me who's never been an account manager trying to train account managers without anyone telling me what the job even is. You know, it's like, that's definitely a challenge that's affecting them, but I don't know if an LMS could solve that. Yeah. Well, you know, I think it's, um, you know, it's something where you want to you know, it sounds like what you're telling me, tell me if I'm off here at, at all, but like the, the major issues are um, just, there's no real way to report and, and see if, if people are, are, are taking your training. And so, um, you know, that's one thing is reporting. And then, uh, you know, a, another one would be is that, you know, just um, like, yeah, you just, you, there's no real defined track for, for learners and based on who they are, based on like their specific, you know, audience and, and use case. Are, am I right on those two things? Am, am I off at all? And kind of what the main drivers here are, or you, you, you tell me what your, your kind of main priorities are, because I want to focus on what's most important to you if we were to proceed to something further. Yeah, just the number one thing and pretty much my entire focus is the automation piece because I can't, even when we hire more people, I can't have them spending time 
you know, scheduling all day and like working through schedules and stuff. I'd, I'd rather just have a way to have everything pathed out for them so they can focus on building content and delivering content. Yeah. So, you know, one of the great uh, parts that our customers really tell us about uh, with Docebo is that, um, you know, when you use the system, right, um, you know, wouldn't it be nice, right, if you could come into a system and the system experience uh, really throttles to you as the learner. So, you know, most organizations, the culture is top-down learning, like, like sort of like that. You, you have kind of a top-down learning structure, just not with the software to support it. Meaning, you know, you have a training and you just say, go take it. And you're like, God, I help, God <laughs> help uh, me that they take it. And like you said before, you said, um, you know, we have a discussion. If they don't know what the heck we're talking about, then I kind of know that they don't take it, but there's no way to really track that. Um, you know, with this uh, system, you you could um, log into the system and set it up for, with different audiences so that maybe your people onboarding, they get one experience and they only see certain things. Um, and that's based on who they are. And then it unlocks as they progress through more training and um, through their experience. Um, so that's one thing. And you don't have to kind of think about it. The system does that based on, um, you know, kind of uh, how you set it up in the beginning in your audience. Um, you know, secondly, um, you know, kind of as it relates to automation, um, you know, the, what I think we might uh, want to focus on, we probably definitely want to show you. Um, and you tell me if, if uh, there's something specific on here. Um, but that, that same experience, how it throttles to the user, same thing with the admin. So like you as a sales enablement, you could um, also see reports that are automatically generated based on specific uh, users. And they're, they're sent to your inbox like every Monday um, or you know, every day you know, on who's taking the training and what and when. You know, you're not like writing out all these notes in like what you say, Evernote, like Evernote goes away. It would be like automated reports into your inbox with something like that, um, you know, kind of uh, help or do you see something like that, you know, kind of uh, making an impact? What, what are the reports on? Yeah, it's an awesome question. Um, that's a big question. <laughs> um, they, they're on a lot of different things. Um, you know, we have 30 different um, custom reports you can, you can go through. Um, and there's, you know, automatic kind of at a glance reports, but like high level, you can see um, that's also just kind of something that really separates us in the market is the level of reporting. So you can get um, beyond just like, like, did someone complete a course? You can re get really granular, did certain questions, where did people fall off? Um, you know, you can get things like um, at what point in the process did, did people stop? Like, what are their assessments? Like, you can really track assessments. So instead of just kind of having a conversation and, and you know, kind of telling in a conversation if someone didn't get what you were talking about, you'd see um, really granular assessment level data, not just did someone start a course. You, you could see if they actually retained it and, and it, it seeped in. Right. Gotcha. But, you know, something like that is something we would want to show. And, and I would take your lead in, in, in diving through what reports really matter to you. Cool. Um, so I got, I got a question. Yeah. We are, we're, we're looking at like 10 of these, right? Uh, if, if I was just to say like, what is your major standout compared to like a lesson Lee, what would you say? You know, I would say, um, you know, Lessonly is uh, it's a great it's a great software for certain use cases. You know, typically they felt and 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 all there's 700 or so LMSs out there. There's a lot. They mean a lot of different things to different people. Um, they focus really primarily on the internal use case. Um, so um, you know where where that is with you today. So like training your learners, training you know onboarding learners. Um, but as you grow and, and maybe offer, you know, if, if, if PandaDoc ever wanted to sell training externally, maybe an e-com space or even certify your, your partners that use PandaDoc um, in, in, in being like a certified PandaDoc partner, that's where we would step in and fill that void um, in terms of allowing you to grow and, and offering you more than just kind of an internal model. But again, I mean, you know, it's, it's really just about how you would use the system. And that's really kind of where, but we offer you a lot of, um, I guess you could say flexibility with that and also your different audiences, a lot of customization around 
audiences, automating that experience with that and, and not just focusing on kind of like an internal use case. Gotcha. Okay. From like, just like an internal point of view, then like just from helping out the people that are onboarding into my sales programs, what do you say you guys do better than Lesson Lee? Um, I mean, what, what did you like about them? Like you've had a demo with them? No, I have not. I just need to like be able to take a short list back to people. And we know that Lesson Lee is like on the top of the stack. So like even from a bandwidth perspective, I'm going to do like a full evaluation. I just want to know high level what's different. Cool. Yeah. You know, I mean, really, like, I, I think it goes back to like, why, what, you know, why is Lesson Lee at the top of the, the list and, and what it is about them. But, you know, it, we, we compare, you know, on, on specifically on, on, um, you know, a lot of different things. But like I said, I think people really come to us because of our experience, um, whether it's Lessonly or any competitor for that matter, people come to us because we put a lot of um, uh, really thought and care around um, what uh, learners experience when they're in an LMS and how that's automated. And, um, and when you see the system, I think you see those clear differences when you see, you see us side by side. All right, cool. What's next then? And I think at this point, man, I think you, um, you know, gave me enough information. Look, I, I like to land on a nice quote, like, um, you know, Ben Franklin once said, you know, tell me something and um, I'll forget, teach me something and I'll remember, involve me and I'll learn. So with that said, Patrick, would you like to, to learn something be really involved in a demo, maybe like later next this week or next? I mean, that was, that was a baller line. I got to tell you, that was, that was, that was amazing. Uh, yeah, of course, after that, how can I say don't involve me? I don't want to learn. Um, yeah, let's, <laughs> right. do, let's, let's, let's do next week. All right, let's do it, Patty. Bam. Tawny. Awesome. All right, let's give some feedback. I want to make sure you get as much feedback from the group here. Because, uh, well, we're done, right, Alex? That was... Yes, thank awesome. you. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. Zara, you're first. Great. So I have, I have a lot of different feedback. That's more on a detail level. Obviously, I could tell that you weren't really that knowledgeable in the different competitors out there. Like you didn't have that really like strong base where you know exactly what actually differentiates you. When I don't have that, I normally do. But once you renew in a game, you sort of don't have that to the full extent. I always sort of retreat back to you get me in the implementation to support you to actually get your goals done. I had a few questions. I don't know how to, how the feedback process works. So I'm just going to dive into sort of questions. Yeah, just, that I just, it's free form, Sarah. There's no real structure here. Just okay, good, good. Al, Al, so basically, top guy, you can you can't hurt his feelings. Okay, that's good. That's good. I, I'm not going to try to either. It. I, I just want to sort of give you some input on the detail level. Mm -hmm. I think there was there were some points where he he actually said we are going to need an LMS. He actually spoke those words in his reply to one of your questions. And I would pick that up instantly and say, why would you say that? How are you thinking that? Can you elaborate? Because you need to understand why he's even looking for this sort of system. If you take away the saving of time, does he actually want his, his, his people to learn something? Or does he just want to make sure they watch the material? Or does he actually just want to be able to report on it? Like, what is his actual need here? Why would he say that? Because obviously he's, he's already sort of landed in the experience idea that he wants an LMS, but why? Like, what is the point besides saving time? But I, because that's not really a strong value point to choosing you over someone else. So that was the feedback I had. Like when you ha heard that, I would have picked that up and sort of just like, why would you say that? What, would, what is it you actually feel like you would need? Why would you need it? Because obviously he was going to recruit some people. And he was going to, because they were experienced with LMS, like they would need it. Like that's not really a value point either. So I would dive into that one. Uh, he also, I would also ask the question again, do you want the teams to actually evolve their knowledge or what would it mean for their success? If they succeed better in, in learning these skills and actually applying them, what would that mean for you mm -hmm. in your role? Mm -hmm. And I also missed a question that I actually always ask in any sales call, whatever I'm selling is, what is your main KPI? Like, why would you be fired if you didn't achieve next year? Like, because that's basically the only thing that's really important for him to actually achieve. So that's the line I would sort of take into account. Like, what would you be fired for not achieving next year? 
That's a really good question, I think, because that would dive into sort of his main KPI for his role and what he really needs to achieve. And if that's sort of in increasing skill level, if that's something they're actually looking at measuring, okay, great, then the LMS obviously, just because you have that question in the mix would obviously you would be a better supplier because you get that that's the question that really matters. Uh, I would also ask sort of what kind of impact he's looking to get, like what are you really looking to achieve? Again, looking for them to learn, increase their skills, or just report, save time. Like what is the actual reason why you would actually use an LMS instead of sending out Google sort of videos and stuff. Um, and actually also looking at the different suppliers that are out there and always have a backup line when you don't know the other supplier to always be able to say sort of it's, it's our onboarding. Like we make sure you actually get the results you need. Like that's, what's, that's what difference us. And then obviously that needs to be true though. So if that doesn't differentiate you, you can't really use that line. I'm, you're gonna notice you guys, because I'm really like, if I can't, I, I also deliver in many of my, my projects, I sell software and then I actually deliver them in certain extenses to clients, meaning that I cannot paint like the grass is greener here if it doesn't really actually is greener here, <laughs> which is a, which is a, a lesson learned for, from a few mistakes, sort of promising something I couldn't deliver on. That was my like in, in detail feedback. I hope that was good. I hope you get something out of it. That was my take. Yeah, thanks, sir. That was awesome. That was amazing. Uh, Nick, I think I, I said uh, we want something. Anything I did well, Sarah? <laughs> <laughs> you want the good feedback? Yeah, I, I actually have one more thing I would change. Okay. And then I can say one more thing that you did well. I actually did some notes while we, you were going through it. Okay. So uh, another word change. I, you opened up really well. Like the opening line, sort of the opening statement was really strong. You said basically this can go three different ways. And you sort of took away like the, the fear people would have to say, I'm not interested. Like you'd say that that was basically okay. The only change I would make in that would be not using red flags because that's such a negative term. I would say uh, there's two ways this call can end up. Either we realize that we're not a perfect match for each other because we don't we don't feel that like joint connection of where we are and where we want to go. And that's completely okay. And then the other way it might go that we feel like this is a straight value on point and we want to move forward to a demo together, which is basically obviously really good for me as well. Like I would, I would remove the red flag idea because the things that starts happening in the customer's mind when you say words like that is like fear. Like it's a very negative way of putting it, but the entry was really strong. And I also think you had great questions, but I do not think that you have a clear mind of where you want the question to end up. Like you ask, you get a lot of information, but you're not really leading the conversation the way that I think you are going to be doing in six months. Like this Thank is you. all about getting to know the, the process. So you have a really good, like you get people to feel really comfortable. You have a good structure. It's all about sort of the end goal of the conversation. That's not really clear. And it's not really clear to you. I think that's why, because you haven't done this enough <laughs> with this specific platform. Hmm. Yeah, Thank thanks, sir. Thank okay, you. Nick. What do so, you have? Um, you know, there's there is way more B2B sales experience here than than I've got by far. <laughs> so I'm I'm gonna come at this from a slightly different perspective. So let me ask you, Alex, is this your setup? Is this if I hop into a Zoom with you, is this what I'm seeing? Uh in terms of a discovery call? In terms of like, the- Oh, well, my background. What, what you're wearing, the ear pods, the background. Oh, no. I, probably not. No, I just thought five on Friday, throw, throw in the, uh, but ear pods, yes. But Fair like, enough. I would be casual. Like I, I would, I, I don't get like, like collared shirted. I don't know. I, I don't know. I haven't had a call yet with a client, but I probably wouldn't put a sweatshirt on. I don't know. We'll see. So if I'm having a client call, I've always got a collared shirt and a jacket just at the ready. And- yeah. You know, my point with that is that we're living in this Zoom world and everyone's wearing, you know, T-shirts and, and who knows what kind of pants they're wearing. Um, but the reality is, is that this is still a business conversation, right? And I still want to see the credibility coming through the screen because if no one else is, you really position yourself differently with that, right? Second thing is, is that I wouldn't have the earbuds hanging out. I would have a headpiece like Tucker or Patrick has. Um, and then what's behind you is really important. Um, people kind of miss that, but how are you set up? How is your lighting? How are you lit? Cause I don't, I'm not seeing, you know, you're very authentic and engaging 
and that's something I can't teach, but I, it, it's, it's masked a little bit because it's so dark, right? So how are you lit? Just some things to think about as you, as you position your setup. Um, now I'm, I'm going to play you for a second, Patrick, it's a pleasure to meet you. How are you today? Okay, Great, man. How are you doing? I'm fantastic. Do you prefer <laughs> uh, Patrick or Pat, or I heard Alex call you Patty. Is that, is that, is that a nickname? <laughs> you can call me Patty. <laughs> But whatever you want. Hey, it's <laughs> I'm just here to have a conversation with you. Um, I pulled up your LinkedIn real quick just before we hopped on the call. It says USA, but you don't have a city. Where are you based? I'm based in St. Pete, Florida. Oh, that's a nice place to be. That's a nice place to be. Are you, um, are you a Rays fan? Uh, yeah, I have to be. So, yes. You have to be, but it's kind of tough yeah. being a Rays fan. <laughs> it is. Right? I don't know what you did. You got my Toronto Raptors. You got my Toronto Raptors for the at least the beginning of the season because they're playing out of Tampa right now, right? They are, yeah. Fantastic. Hey, listen, one last thing before we get into it. I noticed you're wearing a, a Chili Piper hat. Have you converted over to Chili Piper? <laughs> I do use Chili Piper. I'm on their uh, customer advisory board. Oh, interesting. Are you really? So a I few have, people yeah. have brought it up to me recently, and I'm, you know, I'm starting to, 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 to explore it a little bit just to see if that's something that might be value, uh, valuable to me. What's your favorite uh, advantage with it, Pat? Uh, they make it so you can completely make it even when you're passing opportunities to different reps. So everybody gets the same amount of opportunities. It kind of stops the infighting on the sales level. Like, oh, they got more ops than me this month. We could use that on our side. Okay. I'm definitely going to dig a little bit deeper. Last question. I noticed uh, on your LinkedIn, it says that you're the co-founder of uh, Five on Friday, but it says you're the funny guy. You're going to make me laugh today? <laughs> I hope so, man. I hope so. Right. Good stuff. So what I was trying to do there, Damn. Alex, that, that's wow, amazing. dude. Uh, Holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> well, so this is interesting. I'm like six weeks into this online world. I was an executive in the cruise industry for a long time. And what we did was B2C, right? I had to build engagement. And if you've ever cruised and you get on a cruise ship, you get on, you're like, wow, this cruise ship is amazing, right? And, and there's a spa and a casino. And if you're coming from, not from St. Pete where he is, but, you know, if you're coming from Sweden with Sara, you know, it's like, oh my gosh, the sun, look at the sun. So we were so focused on building rapport, right? Because I've got to get you into, there's 12 revenue departments on a cruise ship. I got to get you into mine and thinking about what I'm selling you, which is duty-free. So um, building that rapport is, as I get into more and more B2B conversations and I'm seeing the process and what's laid out, I just see an opportunity that I think is missed of, of rapport building really quick. Because what I want from Pat in that two minutes, what I'm trying to get from Pat is, He's, he's, he's had, he's got 10 things, right? I actually wrote down because that's typically they're looking at 10 things. I want to build the relationship as quickly as possible with Patrick that I'm into the top three, regardless of whether I'm the right application or not, right? I, I want him to be my champion on their side. I want him feeding me information. I want him saying, well, you know what? With Lesson Lee, they had these objections. How would you counter that? Because right? I've been in that situation, I, I did a, a brief experience in B2B, where I've built such a good rapport that they're like, oh, Nick, so listen, I really want to help you out with this. So ABC, right? And that gives me all kinds of ammunition and completely changes the structure of the conversation. Um, the only thing I would say, uh, you know, one thing you said when you were trying to book the next call, you said, maybe would you kind of, you know, hey, I'd be like, Hey, Pat, man, listen, I'd definitely love to get on a discovery call with you. How's next Tuesday at 11 o'clock? Are you free? You want to check your calendar? That's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Will, the baton's in your court. You better have a, a sweet, buttery radio voice. <laughs> uh, also, Pat, I'm, I'm in St. Pete, so we should uh, link up sometime. Uh, yeah, dude, dude, I'm in Palm Harbor, so I don't know that. Whoa. <laughs> See, look at that. Um, so uh, actually, Nick, your points on rapport building are really interesting. So Gong has put out some research around this where they look at like, how did the call start? Did they get straight to business? Did they like chit chat? And what they saw was most people when they were doing that rapport building actually hurt their deal flow as far as like moving the deal to the next stage. But I think it comes down to the point of like, people are trying to force it versus like doing it in a very natural, authentic way. Like Nick just did there. This is like, if you do it like Nick did, it's certainly going to work for you as far as like setting up that conversation. You know, something that you did really well in that early stage was you set the agenda. You know, you basically set my expectations for what I was about to hear, what I was going to get out of the call and what the next step was. 
And then at the very end, you asked for, you know, is that what you were expecting to get? Which like, you know, makes me feel like I'm in control even though I'm not. Um, yeah, Nick, yes, Sarah, you were talking about a couple of things in the, in the conversation that you know, I think about all the time at Lavender, which is like the, the tonality and like the, how you were presenting the information. So like in that agenda, like some of the messaging was a little unclear and you were kind of wishy-washy and like, I kind of faded out from like understanding everything that we were going to go through, you know, similar to like the, the question track on like date, like the workflow, right? It's like you nailed questions on the workflow. And like at a certain point, I was like almost overkill on like workflow questions. It's like, are there opportunities where you can simplify the questioning and get to a point of just like, you know, I've identified that there's a problem here and then very simply offered up, like we have a solution for that. So like with um, like uh, the Lessonly thing, for example, you know, when we were going into like, how are you different? You're probably actually extremely comparable on like the functionality of the internal thing. And so the way you presented it was very much so like, yeah, they're better than us at the internal level, but we've got external capabilities that they don't have. When in reality, it should have been like, yeah, we do the same thing that they do from an internal perspective, but we also have the ability for you to bring in partners and you know external parties into that training program. Is that something that's important for you? And like that way, you can immediately justify like, uh, hey, we're on the same playing field, so you don't need to like compare and contrast us. But you know, is this additional capability that we have something that you need to be focused on as well that we can do? Um, to Sarah's point about. Um, this sort of like question track around like the workflow. Uh, you got a ton of information, but you know, Patrick, you know, he's not gonna get promoted based off of him automating his daily life. He's gonna get promoted based off of the outcomes that he drives in the business. And so you've got to get an understanding of what those outcomes need to be. Yeah, I, I love the tactical advice of what the question is of um, you know, what's that KPI that you have to drive that, or you have to, otherwise you're gonna get fired. Cause I think about like, this is like, I used to work in consulting. Like, my job was to get you promoted. And like, if I didn't do a good job, then like it meant you either got fired or you didn't get promoted because you brought us into the organization and it didn't go well. But if it went well, my job was to make you the hero of the organization and like you would have, like ideally gotten a promotion. That's sort of the KPI that I measured myself on. And so like with this, it's like, you know, how is Patrick driving like outcomes for the business in other departments? Like one of the, the questions he sort of, um, he sort of gave you a layup into talking about this was like, I'm not an AE, but I have to train AEs. And it was like, to me, I was like, that, that's like this outcome that he's like trying to figure out how to get to this outcome because he's not an A, but he's got to make really good A's uh, out of these new individuals who've come into the organization. And so it's like, how does Docebo help him create and mint these like all-star A's within the organization and like show him how you're going to like turn him into this like AE printing machine that like the company like is you know, going to be like, oh my gosh, like how do we put more money into L&D? Because, you know, this guy's doing such a good job making our sellers so effective. Um, all right, that was the, uh, I'm trying to think if I've got any other uh, notes, just, um, you know, focusing on like the simplicity of like what you do. I mean, this stuff will come with time, right? But it's just like, um, the more you're speaking, the more you're telling me about what you do, like the less I'm actually absorbing. And so it, it's almost like give me the fifth grade reading level version of like, um, yeah, it's going to be great. It works really well. We do this, we do that. We simplify your workflow. Um, you know, like, and Patrick also like really made it like simple. He's like, I just want it to be like a marble that goes down. It's like, Great, yeah, plug and play, we set it, forget it. Um, and we give you reporting so that you can come back and adjust it later and you can work with those external parties um, to yeah, help you um, 
yeah, coach up those AEs better. Um, trying to see if I have any other notes on that, but um, those are the the things that I saw from it. But I do I I like the the thinking. I could kind of see like you were almost using like spin selling underlying like the questions you were asking of like very situational. All right, what's the problem associated implications? And um, yeah, something I would have liked to see more of was you know, outcome-based questions in that situational era. And then like, as you're sort of getting into the problems associated, like leaving little sticky verbal notes of like, oh, perfect, we do that really well with like something here, which just like, you know, in my brain like associates problem, the Chabo has an easy, simple solution for it that like will make my life better. So before, before, uh, before we hand it off to Tucker, two things. Will, if Docebo changes their uh, sales tagline to, what was it that Patrick suggested? A, a money printing machine for- turn, turn your training work into a sales rep printing machine. Yeah, yeah. so you, you got to give Will kudos for that if you use it. Um, and then before I hand it over to Tucker, I feel like, and I, Alex, I know you're, you're, you're a resilient guy, but like we've been giving you lots of, uh, you guys all know or heard of like the Toastmaster sandwich where it's like, you know, the, the compliment and or the, the, the good stuff. The shit then, sandwich? Yeah, the, yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, yeah. it feels like all you're getting is like the, the, the mid, the mid the side. Shit. Yeah. Wait, Alex, I actually, I saw you in Thursday night sales last night, man. Like, you know, Docebo is lucky to have an AE who's you know, this eager to go out and like learn and get better. So like, yeah, I know you've got the thick skin. And so I was just excited to dig into how we Yeah, and, 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 you know, I'm super thrilled. Everybody's given really good feedback, but I just, you know, there's, there's lots of great stuff there, Alex. We're just, we're just trying to, you know, get. No, get dude, I need, I need this stuff. Hey, one, one last Go. thing, like for everybody too. What's difficult for me too is like, and I think Patrick, you know, this is like connecting the value of learning to revenue. Like most organizations, like before 2020, it wasn't a pro, like learning was like 15th on the priority list for like revenue, and like so it's hard to. There's a lot of companies that are trying to like, how do you measure? And we have a Salesforce integration and that sort of thing. But like, that's another thing I'm trying to hard to like, you know, really monetize it, monetize the pain of, of learning. But like now that, you know, now I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it because now we're all remote. That's a huge opportunity because every business has to rethink how they do business, you know, now. So like, that's where we can help you rethink what you were already doing. But I'm, I'm trying to w work through how, like, like Sara said, like, you kind of know where you, you think you want to go. You just don't know the, like, steps to get there or whatever. That's when I'm thinking through those steps and, like, questions. So all this is helpful, like, if, if there are those questions and things. I'm going to review this video a lot, I think. So, and I, maybe even people internally will yeah, as well. Uh, go ahead, uh, Nick. You had something before we jump to Tucker. Yeah, I just wanted to respond to what. Will said about building rapport, and I, I get you, Will. I understand, and the reason why, as I watch a lot of tape of people doing sales presentations the last couple of months, is that they're like, "Oh, you're in Chicago. Is it cold?" And that's kind of where it goes. All I'm saying is that there's What's a lot the of weather, <laughs> right? Right. So I get someone from Chicago. I'm not talking about the weather. I'm not talking about deep pizza. I'm like, man, the one thing I gotta get as soon as I get in Chicago is a, a an Italian beef wet, and not from Portillo. It's gotta be from Buenos, and you know, all I'm saying is that there's a ton of Easter eggs in everyone's LinkedIn. And I always have my browser open and I dedicate at least if I can two or three minutes to look through and find out what that is. And the reality is, is when I was on cruise ships, I was teaching people from Serbia how to engage with Diane from Eau Claire, Wisconsin, right? So, and whatever it is for you, but the reality is you're selling into like 20, 25 major US cities every day, right? Boston, Denver, what do you know about Indianapolis? Tucker's in Indianapolis. Tucker, I on my bucket list is St. Elmo's. Is it really the best steakhouse in America? Like I just got, is it really that good? Or or do I not need to come through town, right? The shrimp, the it's, shrimp it's, cocktail, that, baby. Okay, Alex, so, so you know what you're talking about. There you go. <laughs> Shit will burn the hell out of your nose, but it's great. <laughs> but that, that's all I'm saying, Will, is that I, I think it's because people do something so basic and there's just an opportunity if you really deep uh, dig deeper into it that's all I want to say. I'm going to shut up. Dude, that's awesome, Nick. Tucker, tell us about the steak. Uh, oh, no, I'm joking, rare. I'm joking, I'm joking. Medium Take rare it. every time, <laughs> uh, with some shrimp cocktail on the side, baby, and we're good to go. Uh, 
All right, I'm just gonna leave and go get some shrimp actually now. Okay, so um, I think everybody had really great points here. I wanna go back to something you actually said like a minute ago, hard time of articulating the value of learning. I don't think that's what you should be focusing on as it relates to like you needing to explain that to him. You need to pull that out of Patrick. So what I mean by that is he gave you some clues in the beginning. Hey, I'm having trouble with top of funnel activities. I'm having trouble with bottom of funnel activities. What does that mean? Is that cold calls? Is that closing? Is that discovery? What does that mean, Patrick? And then it's like, okay, yeah, you know, our, our discovery is really bad when I know that a rep does X, Y, and Z, you know, that leads to a better outcome for us. Okay, how do you know that? And how, why are they not doing it today? Well, you know, when they get onboarded, they may or may not have missed that in the beginning. And, you know, then it becomes bad habits that, you know, are just driven all the way down through the sales floor for, for multiple years to these reps until I, I go and fix it. Okay, so what would fixing that problem do if we did it right up front during their training? Hmm, I never thought about that, but I know our, our close rates go up when they ask these questions in discovery, right? And you kind of just, that push and pull there with, you know, what is, what does learning mean to you? Well, what are, what are you trying to accomplish? Like, what's the, what's the problem at hand? And I would imagine PD has a good understanding of, you know, what learning means to him as it relates to his, his current problems, at least some of the impact that you can have. So I think that's super important. I'm, I'm new in my role. I'm six weeks in. I know we started kind of at around the same time, Alex. So I'm, I'm kind of going back to the basics. So some of the things I do before a call is three customer examples, three things about the company that I know, and three things about the person. So when you're trying to build rapport, you have nine touch points that you can hit off. If you do a swing and a miss on baseball, okay, well, hey, I saw that you were a customer advisor at, at Chili Piper. What do you think? I saw your hat as well. It's pretty cool. Um, three customer examples. Hey, like I'm on your website right now. I found it really quickly. There's a case study of Latera Systems, which is a mid-sized software company, not the same as PandaDoc, but very similar. 3,200 satisfied software customers and partners in four months. So very aggressive training and they actually switched from another LMS. So, you know, and this guy, Daniel, they have kind of a hero picture. He's not as good looking as Patrick, but it's really hard to beat, uh, but he does have a nice beard like Patrick. So you could kind of make a joke there. So. Um, and then just like being able to take Daniel from Watera and say, you know, they were looking at Lesson Lay, they were looking at a couple others. I heard you say earlier in the conversation that, you know, automation was number one. You're bringing on a ton of new folks um, and you've got partners selling this as well. I mean, that's exactly where Watera found success with us. So really, like, it doesn't matter what you do better than Lesson Lay. It doesn't matter what they do better than you. It matters what Patrick cares about. And then that's what your product solves. So kind of just matching up that equation there. Um, earlier discovery, um, some of the, the questions were kind of string questions. Tell me about your team. And then it was just like, it just, you know, it kept going on, like ask the question, get out, let them answer. Um, and then that, that discovery that you do is then going to give you all those answers down the line when like, Patrick's like, all right, I'm going to see what this guy knows about lessonly about, you know, what, what problems he's solving. It's really, really hard to answer that if, you know, he doesn't give you the, give you the recipe, which you got to get out via question. So, um, you did a, you did a decent job painting a brighter future at the end. I think, you know, with more information you could do, could do better, uh, than that. Um, and yeah, writing off automation, you talked about Evernote going away, automated reports to your inbox. Like one question that PD asked that I loved was what do reports do? And my question would be, what do you want them to do, Patrick? Not, well, we do all sorts of reports here and there. And he's, he's like, I, I wanna know something specifically here. I just, I don't know it yet. So kind of tossing it back at him. So lots and lots there. Alex, love you, man. Uh, you Thank know, you. Early, early in the role, I'm being critical as you as yeah. you asked for, but um, appreciate I, it. All stuff I know, I just didn't say it in the moment. So you're good. It's all good. Go ahead, Sarah. Yes, I'm gonna unmute. So can I can I give you a suggestion? I mean, every time I'm new in role, what I would always do is actually because being able to speak to cases, like I could just mention, like I would mention a few cases, sort of be able to talk about them. To be able to do that, you have to talk to a few clients, like actually talk to them, like the real clients, not just 
the person who sold to that client, but actually talking to the clients and asking a few questions. Like, how did you experience the onboarding with us? What did you get? What kind of values did you get? Just set up a few calls with existing clients. Just like, I just started this role. I just want to understand the values you picked up from using our platform because I'm trying to understand how to betch, better help clients become heroes in our organization. Could you help me out? Like most clients are pretty good at just saying like, yeah, let's jump on a call. That is a suggestion I would really recommend because at this point, it's hard to draw the storylines of clients when you haven't really gotten the stories from someone who's actually client. That was just a, an idea. It's funny. We have a bunch of customer stories and I prepared one for this and it just didn't present itself. And I was like, just preparing for this one story and you just didn't really fit and I didn't use it. Like, I would but, talk to them either way because whatever happens in that conversation, it could end up with you getting three, two free leads of new clients you could call up straight away after. Like yeah. it could always end up with that sort of situation. Like if you would say, do you have any like companies you know of that needs this, that you could recommend that I could just pick up the phone to, that could end yeah. up in meetings anyway. But it, you need to get the story from the client because I feel like like client stories that are documented, they're not really like emotionally there yeah. for you yeah. because it's not your story. But once you talk to the client, you can make it your story. And then it becomes more genuine. I think one of the things that I realized now that we've had a conversation here is that you guys are all basically in the States and Canadian, right? Like most of you are not in European area. Swedish sales and Nordic sales, European area sales, would, I would say it's a big difference. It's just interesting to hear because you guys are talking about sort of rapport and you're talking about like discussing with the client on a point where you want to make friends as well. I would say most of my skills in sales comes from not making friends, just getting to the point, which is a difference. So it's very interesting. Very, I'm learning a lot here. It's good. Are you sure uh, you're in Sweden so thank you for that. Germany? Sorry? I said, are you sure you're in Sweden and not Germany? Getting right yeah, to the I point? Know, yeah, I know. But it's probably because I'm more of a straight to the point person. I'm more of a process. I don't really like people. I like processes and getting in line and getting KPIs <laughs> happening. So that, it's actually been a struggle throughout my entire sales career. To, to try to build rapport, but it doesn't work the same way. It's not making friends the same way. I think it's important from the US relationship wise, it's more important than it is in the Nordics. I think the cold is just killing us all. We just want to get to the point. But... <laughs> I think um, there's, to, to touch on your point, sir, I think there's multiple ways to build a rapport. One of which is like baseball, basketball, what's the weather, what are you eating? And then the other way is just to be technical as fuck and just come at them with like, hey, I, I know more than you just, about this and I'm going to show just. you that pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah, that, that's my roots. That's what I do, man. <laughs> uh, I, Solutions I one, engineer. I have one piece of feedback. So, I mean, obviously lots of great feedback from the folks and I, I can't remember who kind of mentioned this, but somebody mentioned like maybe it was Tucker painting a picture. So I felt like early on, like there's the, the concept of the upfront contract, which I don't disagree with. But I felt like you could have maybe done a little bit better of like helping uh, Patrick like understand. So maybe it's it's relating through a story saying, hey, you know, this we think this is a similar size client. I, look, I'm going to ask you some questions, but here's like I'm going to walk you through some questions and help you like paint a picture of how like PandaDoc could be using this, and then and then come back to that in the conversation. So kind of say, hey, remember we talked about this. Now you know, does that kind of fit with kind of what I was explaining earlier and then kind of bring so kind of like tell them I'm going to take you down this road and we're going to talk about like how PandaDoc could be here and how things could look like this and then when you get to those junctures kind of remind them like hey we're here now um you know we're your organization's now doing this you know you've got the automated onboarding it's like the marble and so you know at the end Patrick can kind of see himself in that story Does that makes sense mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah put him in it yeah yeah but I feel like if I was saying that with Nick's voice, it would just come out better. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it sounds like, you know, uh, Alex was like, Nick, do you want to be on my disco call? Because you did the rapport building really well. <laughs> dude, I kind of forgot it was a role play for a minute, Nick. And I was just like, man, this guy's a great dude. <laughs> like, we should be friends. <laughs> you know what? It's funny just because what's sorry, quick rabbit hole, what Sarah was talking about selling the Nordics, you know, as he, I grew up in Canada, but I live in the US. And it took two years selling to Americans to understand that it was okay. They want 35 second elevator. Yeah. Listen, it's capitalism, what you got, I'll listen. 
well, you better hook me in 45 seconds, right? <laughs> so that that was an adjustment. But even, you know, like when I sold on a cruise ship, 80% of my market was American, but then 10% was your 10% was Asian. And, you know, I would sell someone, and a lot of people I talk to don't realize this, but you guys, I'm sure I'll do. But if someone is from China and then someone from Japan and someone from Korea, a lot of people put those into a category. But the reality is they all have a completely different sales process, right? And that's where I go with like the regionality of Americans is that, and I'm now a, a, a I'm a very Americanized Canadian, very proud American. Um, but the point is, is that someone from Denver is going to have a different, a different set of ass and a different temperament and a different whatever than someone from St. Petersburg or someone from Seattle or someone from Memphis, right? So pe people don't think of it that way. Like, especially a lot of non-Americans are like, well, Americans are all the same. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's so regional. You don't understand. So anyway, that's, again, I'll shut up. No, it's good. It's good. Well, listen, uh, I know we're about the hour, so I'm sure some people have to jump. Um, any, any like final thoughts from anybody or question Alex you have, or this is great. I really appreciate you guys carving out time. Sarah, I know it's the end of your day, but um, this has been really great. How do I get gray hair like Will? That's what I want to know. <laughs> it's stress, man. It's all stress. Well, I, I feel like Will's probably the, sorry, Will, I don't want to call you up, but you might be like the, the youngest guy on the call. I don't know. I'm I'm 30 now, so. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Tucker. Tucker's the dream. I remember being 30 and pretty. <laughs> if I if I don't shave or if I shave, I look like I'm a, a child. So I have the beard that helps. So let's all invest in like uh, shaving products for Tucker because he's going through uh, I'm just, a COVID hole down there. I'm in, just uh, happy I don't have the shaving problem. I'm just happy I don't have that. Yeah, not as much though. Be. Not as much, yeah. Um, Some okay. love people, but don't have to shave. I mean, you're good. Beard looks okay. great, Tuck. I, I could talk to all of y'all uh, for another hour. This has been a ton of fun. Um, we'll see each other, I'm sure, online. And um, as I've said many times before, and you know this, Alex, uh, I'd say 99% of the people who've come on, we've ended up connecting with folks here. And then, you know, you know your your game to reach out to probably any of us if you want feedback and you know you want to run through your your, your disco again uh so you know this this isn't where it ends so um hopefully you know we'll see you maybe in six months and you can tell us about how you crush your quota you're gonna crush thank it you, alex man. you're gonna crush thank it. You. yeah man Dude, you got this shit, thank man. you thanks alex All thanks y'all right. have, thank 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 have an awesome weekend y'all happy weekend hey, bye guys good weekend yeah